So today what we're going to be doing is the uh, disassembly and reassembly of an E-series coronator. Um, the same procedure uh, applies for both the E25 or the E35, so all models are covered in this tutorial. Um, to access the internals of this coronator, uh, there are four screws that are exposed at the back plate right here. Uh, you, just, you just require a Phillips head screwdriver for this. So this allows you to separate the back plate from the plastic shroud. To do that, just grab the plastic, remove it out. This exposes all the internal connections. Uh, some of the models will actually have a cooling fan uh, that is an optional, I believe, on the larger uh, chlorinators. To actually remove that, this clip needs to be pressed together there and removed. And the other cable that you would have would be a ribbon cable that, uh, that connects the user interface with the uh, power board. To remove this one, there are two tabs that need to be Push, uh, pulled sideways, so this is one right there, and another one on the other side, and that allows us to separate the back plate from the user interface shroud. Now, one of the common things that you will end up finding that you have to do is either replacement of the user interface here or the power board. We will start with the user interface first. So right here, you also have four Phillips head screws, but they are much smaller, so you need a smaller um, uh, Phillips head screwdriver for that. You remove four of these screws. And that frees up the actual board itself right there. As you can see, there are five buttons that operate different functions of the, um, of the chlorinator through it and a ribbon cable. Uh, this is a part that uh, can be replaced um, and we will go through the reassembly of this thing uh, in, a, in a minute. The other part that is, can be commonly replaced in uh, an E-series chlorinator is the actual power board. There is a multitude of connections over here but all of them are labelled. We will go through them uh, in a moment. There is a cable here that is called the output cable. This one is actually what uh, produces, uh, gives, gives power to the cell. And there are two polarities and an actual sense wire. They actually go connect into the power board there. They are labeled as cell one, cell two, and flow. And these ones are all part of the same cable. How to remove and replace this cable if, uh, if you need. Uh, these are just pushing connectors, so you can just pull them out. And that frees up the cable. If you are in need to replace this cable uh, in its own right, this grommet uh, allows you to, um, allows the cable to go through. Uh, and if, need, uh, if, you, if you need to, repla to replace this, what needs to be done with some um, long nose pliers, you can push these things together such and the actual grommet comes out freeing out the cable the installation is the uh, is just the opposite of what we uh, of what we just did the cable comes back in there And this gets pushed in. Until it clicks in. Now, for the removal of the, um, of the power PCB, more wires are needed to be replaced, uh, removed. So what we have here is cables that are connected to the actual uh, transformer. These two wires here and here are the actual 240 volt feed into the transformer and these other wires, there's one red, two blacks, 
and a white, they are the actual uh, reduced voltage feed from the transformer back into the board, which turns it into usable power for it. Uh, again, the same, the same procedure applies for removing these wires. These are all pushing connectors. So we can just pull the cables out to remove them. Now, these cables, uh, they are color-coded, but on the board itself, there is labeling indicating which color, uh, color uh, codes um, and cables go where. Here you have a blue, brown, red, black and black, they're both the same, and then the white goes in there. So when you reassembly, it's quite uh, simple to put back on. For the continuation of the removal process of the board itself, you have more of these connectors. This is a, a, an earth wire, a green and yellow wire, which also gets removed the same way. And then we have both the power, the incoming power from the wall, uh, which has two connections. One that goes into a board, which is, has a, a, new, a neutral link right in there. And then another one that goes into a relay, which is what turns the pump on and off. To remove these wires, same procedure. You can just take them out right there. And then finally, we have a common neutral that goes into uh, right next to where the uh, power neutral is connected. That also gets removed. And finally, we have the switched power that feeds your, um, your pump plug. So this basically shows us um, a, um, a board that's completely disconnected and ready to be removed. Um, there are a variety of screws. They have to be removed. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight screws that need to be removed. So we will go through that. Let's see, that has freed up our power PCB and leaves this ready for a new board right there. So we have the power PCB here and the user interface right here, ready for um, for new ones, if any one of them needs to be uh, are, are required. So now we will go through the process of reassembling everything again. Uh, we let's say that this is a new part that needs to be put in. Now what we do is we locate the um, the right screws. Wrong way. Once you line up all your screws, you're ready to reassemble. It's good practice to put all your screws loosely first so that you can line all of them out, line all of them up before you actually torque them all up. Now that we have all the screws on, lined up, we can torque them all up. Now when it comes to the reconnection of everything, it's the reversal of what we had before. Um, we can start connecting the transformer first, uh, remembering that you have an incoming and outgoing power uh, and the actual uh, boards are all color coded. So what we do is we find right here on the board itself, we have a brown and a blue um, labeled terminals and that's where we're gonna be connecting them. So we see there's a blue one over there, we connect the blue cable coming from the transformer into there and then we have the brown one connected into there. Then afterwards we will connect the outgoing power from the transformer into the terminals that are labeled in there. There's a red, two blacks which are the same and you have a white one. So what we'll do is red
two black wires. And the white one. This reconnects our transformer again. Now we can connect the output cable that goes to the chlorinator cell. They have uh, cell one and cell two. These ones, it doesn't matter which one they go. There is a cell one connection there, a cell, a cell one and cell two connection, and you have a flow ca cable. The blue one is the flow cable and the other two go to the cell. You can connect them in either one of them. So one of them goes into one of the cell connections. The other one goes to the other cell connection and the flow cable, which is the blue cable into there. So that gives us the transformer and the output cable. Now we're gonna deal with the power itself. Now, how to identify which cable it is, you can follow the, um, the cable that has a three pin plug, that is the actual incoming power. So on the board itself, it actually tells us mains or pump connection. The mains connection is what's coming from the, uh, from the three pin connector. Blue one is your uh, neutral, and your brown is your active in this case. So we will connect first your mains uh, neutral, and then we will connect your uh, mains uh, for your uh, active. On the relay, there is actually an arrow over there that says mains um, active. So we will connect it into top of the relay. And that leaves us with only a few more wires, which is your neutral and your active for the socket that goes to the pump. The blue wire being the neutral, go right next to the other neutral that came from the mains. And then that leaves the active for the uh, pump socket that goes on top of the relay itself there. Finally leaving the earth connection that goes into the earth terminal. So that is the board reconnected. What we'll do next is that we will reconnect, uh, we'll reassemble the uh, user interface onto the plastic cover. So once you have the cover that doesn't have a, um, a user interface, we can connect this one, uh, screw this back on. There are only four screws that are needed right in there. What you need to make sure is you need to make sure you line this up there and on each in the four corners you can reconnect uh, as you can screw the connection the uh, board back on. So with those four screws we have secured our user interface board back on. Now to reassemble everything together we just need to connect the user interface ribbon cable and the fan connector back onto the, uh, the board. Now, to do this, what we need to do, we need to find the connection for the uh, ribbon cable, which is this black connector right over here. It only has one way that it can, uh, that it can go on. It does have a small notch right there which allows us to only go one way. Now you have to make sure that these tabs are open, otherwise it will not allow to, you'll not allow you to receive the cable itself. So what we do is once we line them up, push it over there and if everything is lined up properly, push down and the tabs will lock on on their own. Finally, what we have is we have the fan connection right there. Again, this only has, it can only go in one particular way, so you can line up the tabs for it. Plug it back in and we have everything connected. Now to close it, finally, we have to, there's a couple of slots right over here where this uh, back plate uh, lines up. So we line them back up and close that up. Finally to reassemble, we'll turn it around again and put the final four screws back on.
and that's this disassembly and reassembly of an E-Series coronator. <laughs>